What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys polarium have dropped a load of champions for october and they are going to be some real beasts in there um so we're just gonna be looking at the epics and legendaries today um i've already done a video on the mythical champion which i'll drop in the comments below but um yeah and mythical champions you know they've got like 20 abilities so i feel like they need a dedicated video just for them but we're going to look at the epic and legendaries and i'm actually excited for some of these there are going to be some real game changes in here. So the first one is in High Elves, and it's Neldor. I really like this guy. He looks pretty cool. Also looks quite smug. Got a little smug face going on. And what really stands out to me is his passive and his A1. So passive, whenever an ally places a freeze debuff, this champion has a 30% chance to attack the target with their default skill. And their default skill attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing freeze. This is going to be huge for Finite Hard. And I know it's content that everyone's struggling with. And Polarium basically just releasing more and more champions to help us deal with it. So he's going to be massive for that. Um, his A3 attacks on me two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed buff for two turns. Also heals his champion by 30% of the damage deal uh, dealt. This is going to be, again, massive for Finite because you can put decreased speed on finite on hard mode and that's going to help slow him down a2 attacks one enemy four times again a quad hitter for finite is going to help peel away that shield uh, the first and second hit have a 50 percent chance to place decrease attack and then the third and fourth hit have a 50 percent chance of placing decrease accuracy um i don't think that's going to be like too huge for anything but again this guy looks like he's just made for finite but the decrease attack will be nice because obviously it's going to help the boss do less damage to your team and just give you a bit more survivability. But yeah, really, really awesome champion. The next epic is Undead and it's Ostrox. Um, void, a Void epic support champion. He looks like trash. I mean, this skin is just awful. He really looks like he's just crawled out of the gutter um and like just covered in toilet paper but his kit looks pretty sick so passive whenever an enemy attempts to place a debuff on this champion has a 20 percent chance to reflect it back at the attacker i feel like this guy needs to be in a deflection set um you know he's gonna have so many opportunities to deflect um debuffs back at the boss and one person i really like bommel Bommel, I feel like this guy is going to be the answer to Bommel for a lot of people. And just being able to throw those bombs back at Bommel is huge. Um, it, he really does blow himself up if you do that. So yeah, I think that's going to be a huge strategy that people are going to be using. Um, his A3 removes one debuff from all allies and places a 50% increase accuracy buff on them for two turns. Not a huge ability, but you know it is a cleanse, which is nice. And again, I do feel like it's for Bommel. And be able to increase the accuracy on your allies as well means that they can land their debuffs. His A2 attacks all enemies. If three or fewer enemies are alive, has a 100% chance to place block buffs for two turns. If four or more are alive, then it is 100% for three turns. So again, block buffs it is one of the strongest debuffs in the game right now. And it's so good for Hydra as well. Like just absolutely amazing for Hydra. So, you know, most of the time that means you are going to have and being void as well. It means that you're not going to have any affinity issues on Hydra as well. So I feel like this champion is going to be top tier, especially for Hydra. A1 attacks one enemy, has a 70% chance of transferring one random debuff from this champion to the target. Also heals, I mean, and it'll be a 100% chance. This is an insane A1. Um, if you really want to get benefit of that A1, um, there's two ways to go about it. Either build him really, really fast, so he's getting loads of turns, or um, Relentless, a Relentless set, so we keep proccing extra turns, and we can just keep throwing all those lovely debuffs at the enemy. So yeah, I feel like this guy is going to be a real beast when he comes out. So we've looked at the epics. Let's check out the legendaries. So Kaja, um, she looks really cool. 
Um, I do like her skin, very, very creepy, and there's a lot of fine detail in her costume. Um, she is the other half to Timid, who I'm not going to cover. Um, I don't feel like he's worth going for in the fusion. I'm sure Flare will release content and he'll be amazing at it. Um, but yeah, for me, he's, he's a no-go. I don't think he'll be as strong as some people think. So she has an increase... Um, speed in all battles by 90 percent aura pretty nice uh, passive all turn meter reduction effects are decreased by 50 percent when used against this champion it's not huge but it still is pretty nice um if timid the fool is on the team then this champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects if an enemy tries to decrease the turn meter when timid the fool is on the same team fills this champion's turn meter by the percentage instead nice that is very nice that's a good way for her to cut in a3 fills the turn meter of all allies by 20 percent okay that is huge also removes two random um, debuffs from each ally if timmy timid is on the same team and removes all debuffs from the allies nice wait oh and sorry if timmy's on the team so we remove all debuffs it becomes a cleanse then places D block, uh, block debuffs for one turn. Not amazing. I would say this is sort of okay. Um, but the turn meter fill is nice. And be able to have block debuffs for one turn. I guess that's all you really need. You know, you're not going to get interrupted then. So A2. God, this looks complicated. Okay, so revives all dead allies with 50% HP, 50% turn meter. Then um, increase crit rate and increase crit damage for two turns. If Timmy is on the team, revives them with full HP and full turn meter. That is pretty insane. Um, these two together will be a sick combo. Um, you know, it's like having a uh, Cardinal on your team, but obviously this champion is going to be a lot stronger than Cardinal. The only problem is that it means that you've got Timid on the team who not he's not great. I mean, he does have an amazing strip, which is good. But um, yeah, I just feel like them together, you sort of waste a slot to really get the the full shebang out of Kaja. And if Timmy's on the same team and alive, resets the cooldowns and instantly activates their Craig of Dread. So yeah, I think it's, it's difficult because it means that to really get the full benefit of this, you need Timid to be dead. And that's a lot of, you know... It's difficult to rely on that. It's not 100% guaranteed. So I don't like it that much, to be honest. It's a little bit annoying. A1 attacks one enemy, heals the champion of 10% of their max HP. Again, if Timmy is on the team, then heals all of them by the same amount. Not amazing. Um, for me, I'm going to say I feel like she's mid-tier. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, for me, she's a mid-tier champion. Next one. Ogren Tribes, it's Bellitar. Bellitar. So avoid HP legendary champion. So passive has a 50% chance of decreasing all of ally skills by one turn whenever they are revived. Books up to 70%. I mean, it depends what his revive is. Revives all dead allies with 50% HP, 50% to meter, and then places a shield buff on all revived champions for two turns equal to 20% of this champion's max HP, and it's a four-turn cooldown. Okay, so it just means that when we revive, we have a really good chance of resetting um, our, our teammates' skills by one turn. I don't think it's that strong. If you compare this to, like, Duchess, Duchess's air we revive blows this out of the water. It really does. So not as good as Duchess and like, you know, she's like the first champion that springs to mind, but there's probably a lot of other revivers that I feel are stronger than this. A2 attacks all enemies, places a 50% increase attack buff and a 60% increase debuff on allies for two turns. It's nice um, and also heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. But again, I don't feel like this is good as Duchess. Um, I know, I'll keep, I don't know, I just, I don't know where this champion's really going to fit in. Um, it's definitely not going to be Arena. Attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill of the ally with the highest timing except this champion. Um, yeah, 
for a void legendary this guy is pretty weak, weak source in my opinion um i don't know i really feel like he's just in my opinion this is just diluting the the void legendary pool if i pulled this champion i would be so sad trash just absolutely trash in my opinion and then the last champion is it a skinwalker no not skinwalker sorry it is a lizardman and it's Krokmar, who looks like an absolute ripoff if anyone's played league of legend renekton a uh, top lane champion looks exactly like him um yeah complete ripoff saying that though they have done an amazing job this guy he looks like an absolute boss i hope this guy hits hard i can see him being like an absolute beast in arena just like looking at him he's got a sword he's got claws of course he's going to be a new car so he's a hp champion and Replarium are doing that a lot now. They are releasing a lot of HP and defense nukers, and they are sort of taking over the meta at the moment. So passive, whenever this champion stacks, so whenever this champion attacks, decreases the target's attack defense by 5%, as well as accuracy or resistance by 5%, depending on which stat is the highest. Stacks up to 30%. This is an amazing passive. So obviously being HP based, it means he's going to get loads of turns. You know, if it was an attack nuka, it's not going to work. But being HP, he's going to have loads of HP, probably like 100k, good survivability. And, you know, if they're a defense champion, well, if they're an attack champion, they're not going to be able to hit because they're going to be really weak. If they're a defense champion, we're going to make it really easy to kill them. And if they're like a stripper, it means that we're going to, you know, or a debuff champion, we are going to decrease the accuracy. So they're not going to land those buffs or those debuffs or, or strip us. And if it's a resistance champion, it means it's going to just peel away on them. The only thing is that I don't know if he needs accuracy for this passive to work. I'm going to say I don't think he does. Um, but yeah, we'll find out when when he like people start to get him and stuff. A3, um, increased crit rate and increased crit damage. And then we get an extra turn. So I would still build him with 100% crit rate because if someone puts block buffs on you and block buffs is all over in the meta, it means that you are going to miss out on 30% crit rate and 70% is just not good enough. So I would still build him with 100% crit rate unless you're only using him for PvE. If you're using him for PvE, it's fine. You can go for 70%, but for Arena, you are definitely going to want to crit, crap, uh, crit cap him. A2, attacks all enemies, places a shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. So obviously this guy is going to hit hard. He has to hit hard. This is just going to, yeah, give him big fat shields. Also heals this champion by 10% of their max HP for each critical hit. I mean, this guy already sounds like he is going to be an absolute monster in arena. I mean, I think he'll be pretty insane for PvE content as well. Um, He'll definitely carry you. Like, there will definitely be better options for PvE, but for, for arena, this guy is going to dominate. I'm calling it now. A1 attacks all enemies one time. Oh no, so attacks one enemy, attacks all enemies if the first attack is a critical hit. So yeah, make sure you don't target um, magic champions with him. Like so you want to be focusing force, spirit, or void. And you will definitely, so he's going to have an AoE hitter on his A1. Of course, this is going to slam. Um, this guy is going to be a real beast, definitely. Um, yeah, I would love to have him on my account. He's definitely going to be a real game changer for some accounts. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Um, who who really stands out on this list from you? I do feel like this is a really, like, we will, a little bit of a mix. Epics and some of the legendaries, I feel like, are going to be top tier. And then the Void Legendary, I think, is going to be piss poor. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.